Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of DIY Square Drop Camper Build. This is part nine, and in this video, we're gonna I'm gonna show you the touch-ups that I've been doing to the trailer, um, uh, removing and replacing the brakes and the tires. We'll get into why we're doing that later, uh, as well as putting a cross member in between my two suspensions for extra added support. Um, we'll also do the wiring for the brakes. And I think that's probably it. So, as you can see here, I am using um, the truck bed liner to do some touch-ups after having the wall or the floor sitting on this and moving around a lot. Uh, it did scuff up some stuff a little bit, um, and I never actually did put the uh, the truck bed liner on my uh, fender mounts. So I did that here as well. So as you can see, we took off the tires, and now we are taking off the old brakes. So these brakes are for larger tires because I was originally trying to make them uh, about the same size as my trucks just for easier towing and being able to do more off-roading. However, I realized that having those big tires raised it up way too much, uh, raised the whole trailer up. So what I did was I removed the old tires and what we're doing here is fixing up the new brakes with a bolt pattern for smaller tires and greasing all these up and then we'll replace those and put on the new tires which are considerably smaller and this lowered the overall height of the trailer by almost six inches which was a significant uh change from what it was before uh the main reason i'm doing this is not just because it's gonna like it'll be harder to get into i'll have to put like a step if i had the bigger ones but the main reason is the back galley will have the countertop. And on that countertop, I'll be cutting and chopping, you know, fruits and vegetables and meat and, you know, just uh, general kitchen stuff. And having it up too high makes it very uncomfortable to do these things. And uh, in addition to that, it'll be difficult to cook because the pan and the heat and everything from the stove will be much higher. So doing this lowered everything, as I said, by almost six inches, which was significant. Uh, so we finished up here putting the uh, putting together the new brakes with uh, all the grease and everything we had to do and we're reinstalling them onto the Timbrin axle of suspension and then we'll be putting on the the new smaller tires uh, once again my buddy Darnell coming over and helping me with this was a great help. We did a lot of stuff for the walls this uh, on this day, and also redoing the brakes. Um, he's 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 a rock star. Thank you very much, Darnell. So as you can see here, I am getting out wires to reconnect the new brakes, the ground for them, as well as the uh, the power for the brakes to my brake controller. So I'm just crimping wires and or cutting, uh, taking the outside off of the wires and crimping them to prepare to bring it over to the trailer uh, so that I can install them. That shirt you see says, Real Men Marry Teachers. Uh, I went to Arizona for my bachelor party and went to some spring training games, and when I got there, uh, my sister, I stayed with her for the first day before the bachelor party began to visit, and on the bed when I walked in was this Men Mary Teacher shirt. And um, it's definitely a shirt that I wear that I get the most comments on. Because who doesn't love teachers? Alright, and now we are installing them onto the existing wire that I ran in the previous videos. I realized that I didn't need to make the blue cable because it was long enough. Uh, the leftovers were long enough. I only needed to redo the ground wire cable. And now to the other side. It was a real pain in the uh, you know what doing this while the floor was on.
But, you know, I wanted to get it done before uh, we actually bolted the floor on, so at least it was movable still. So I will have one more video coming out um, before I go on to the honeymoon, or I should say while we're on the honeymoon. I'm going to schedule it to come out in about a week or so after this video comes out. So now you can see that I'm closing up all of the open gaps in the steel tubing. Uh, I found these really cool plastic uh, covers for them. Uh, it's it's going to help keep rust out you know, by preventing any moisture. So this is a 2x2 two two quarter inch thick steel beam that uh, my buddy Carlo, who was in one of my other videos, he, uh, he can get this from work and it was a scrap and it work. So we cut it down in his shop to the right size and now I'm putting in screws so that we can attach it to the suspension with grade 8 bolts. Uh, so I'm putting the holes in first and then I'm going to sand it all down. Well, not sand it, but use my, uh, uh, my flat disc to prep it for priming and uh, truck bed lining. As you can see there, I accidentally sprayed the, the wood on the side, so I had to clean it up with a little bit of acetone. Um, so here's me grinding off all the crap that came on top of it, as well as a little bit of rust on the ends. And then we'll prime and paint it, and finally install it. I let the acetone dry, and now we're priming it. I forgot to slow down that part where I show what I'm using. It's the Rust-Oleum uh, self-etching primer. It's what I used on the entire frame in the back. So now I'm flipping it over, giving the one thing. The one really nice thing about the self-etching primer is you can recoat in two minutes. So it really did not take very long to get this all done. Uh, as far as this, the, uh, the truck bed liner, it was a little more uh, time necessary in between coats. I want to say it was about 30 minutes, 45 minutes between coats. So I got a good three coats on it. And I didn't show all of them because that would just be too much. So here I am putting it through the suspension into the other side of the suspension. And I lined up my holes properly, and I'm using a, uh, a very short, I want to say it was maybe one inch, maybe just over one inch long, grade eight bolt, uh, a washer, and a uh, lock nut. So I, I tighten these up to about 100, 100 pound, uh, a foot pound of torque. I actually, I didn't show it in this video, but I actually uh, managed to snap one of the heads off of the grade 8 bolt, believe it or not, but um, because I was trying to set it to, I want to say it was like 140 or 150 foot-pounds of torque, it was just too much for the bolt, so it, it literally snapped off in my, uh, in my torque wrench, which was pretty crazy. Uh, and you can also see the, these are the tires, it's, it's much shorter but I still have a lot of a lot of clearance here um, and you can also see those wires hanging down so uh, off camera after this I actually removed it put the wires over it and uh, I didn't do I'm not doing a video on it but I reorganized those wires and re uh, stuck them back onto the frame so that they wouldn't drag down at all So don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video where the walls will be going up. All done. And what do we say after a good day's, uh, a good day's worth of work? Cheers, everybody. See you on the next one.